Hello, friends and Bible students. How are you today? Today, we're going to talk about two things. First, we're going to talk about another prophet. And remember, we're prepping for the book of Revelation, which starts next Monday, I think. So we're going to talk about one more prophet, Malachi. And then I want to talk a little bit about prophets in the Old Testament and prophets now. And I, because I think there's a little confusion on that. And a pastor friend of mine recommended that I add this in. And I think that was good advice. So uh, in Malachi, first, we see that he says something exactly like Zechariah said. And that was the message from God was return to me and I will return to you. So we see that this is a recurring theme from God through the entire Bible, even to us today. Now, Malachi was the last Old Testament prophet, and by this time, the temple was most likely completed, because you'll remember in Zechariah, Zechariah was an encourager. He kept encouraging them to keep on, to keep on, and get that temple finished. And uh, we believe by this time, the temple was finished. So here's some things that Malachi said about the last days. He said that two messengers will come. The first would come to prepare the way, and we believe that was John the Baptist. And then he talks about the other messenger, and it is obviously Jesus. The only thing is, he's not talking about the first coming of Jesus. He's talking about the last coming of Jesus. And that's a reminder to us that the Bible is not always chronological, and a lot of prophecies are not chronological. So what Malachi did was he talked about John the Baptist coming, and then uh, he didn't talk at all about Jesus' first coming or Jesus' ministry. He skips right over to Jesus' last appearing and when he comes in all his glory. So then this is what he says, but who can endure when he comes? Who can stand when he appears? He will be like a refiner's fire, testing and purifying. And you'll remember in Zechariah, um, it talked about that when Jesus came, that Israel would see him and know who he was because their eyes have been blinded up to this point and that a, a water would flow out of um, Jerusalem and, and it would cleanse and purify the people. It said he will purify the sons of Levi. In other words, the priest. Then he will come for judgment against sorcerers, adulterers, liars. Against those who take advantage of the widow and the poor. Those who do not fear him. He will not destroy the sons of Jacob if they turn to him. So in other words, Israel, he will not destroy them if they, when they recognize him, if they choose to believe that he is the Messiah and follow him, he will not destroy them. They will be saved. He will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. And I really like this verse, and I didn't write down the verse number, but Malachi's only three chapters long. You can read it. Then you will see the difference between those who serve God and those who don't. The day is coming when the evildoers will stumble, but those who fear his name will trample the wicked on that day that he takes action. And then the last uh, thing that he says is a little confusing to a lot of people. He will send the prophet Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. Now, some people believe that this is the um, the a reference to the prophet Elijah, that that means John the Baptist. And there is a little bit of a reference in the New Testament where Jesus talks about uh, John the Baptist and Elijah. But this is a verse that a lot of people aren't sure about, so... We're not even going to discuss who that might be or what, what it might be. We'll find out when it happens. So now I want to talk about, do we still have prophets? 
Um, I don't know if you have seen this or noticed it, uh, but there are people in the church world who say that they um, are, they take on the title and the office of a prophet or an apostle. And so there's a lot of controversy about that. And so I'm just going to give my opinion. And I'm not sure if it matches the opinion of my pastor friend, but we'll find out. We didn't discuss it a lot, but this is my opinion. So I'm going to read you a few verses first. Ephesians 2 verses 19 and 20 says, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. So this is saying that Jesus is the cornerstone of the foundation that was laid by the apostles and the prophets. So the apostles and the prophets had a very special role of laying the foundation of Jesus and those who followed after him. Another verse is in Ephesians 4, um, 11 and 12. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he gave... And it talks about the uh, jobs in the body of Christ. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, or like the deacons, and the teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. So evidently, God has given gifts and, and given people gifts to build up the body of Christ and to uh, help each other, to teach each other, to guide, uh, to guide new believers who come in. So there are gifts that have been given, and one of those includes prophecy. And, and it says the, the apostles and the prophets. And then I want to look in Hebrews 1, 1 through 2. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But now, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. So in Hebrews 1, it's saying that God used to speak to the people through the prophets, but now he speaks to us through his son. So I believe this is saying that we don't need a prophet to tell us what God wants us to know now that we have Jesus and the Holy Spirit living in us. But I do believe there is a gift of prophecy and people who are the bearers of that gifts could be called a prophet or a prophetess if it's a woman. The secret is in the definition of the word prophecy and who's using that word. So let's look at the definition of the word prophecy. So basically it means an inspired speaker in a general sense. Thayer's Greek definition says, It is one who is moved by the Spirit of God and speaks what he has received by inspiration. Mounce's Greek Dictionary says it can be four different things. A spokesman for a deity, which is what we see in the Old Testament, or a divinely commissioned and inspired person, which I believe is also what we saw in the Old Testament, or a person gifted for the exposition of divine truth. In other words, someone who has been given the gift to speak the divine truth are the word of God. And lastly, it can be someone who foretells the future. Um, and of course, we know that that was in the Old Testament. And I believe there could be some cases where it could be someone who has the gift of prophecy now um, could maybe be given something that might be going to happen. But let me tell you one more thing. This is my understanding of what all the scripture says in a nutshell. 
God divinely commissioned particular men or women to speak on his behalf up until Jesus died and rose again. I believe John the Baptist was the last man of that description to hold the office or the title of a prophet. I believe it was a very special and rare commission over the 4,000 years all the way up till Jesus. There were just a very small list of people who were designated a prophet who spoke the very words that God told them to speak. So it's a small list. And I guess now today, there's a huge list of people who say that that they have the office or the title of a prophet that is equal to the Old Testament. And I believe that might be a mistake. I believe that since God placed his spirit in those who love him, that he speaks through his spirit directly to us. I also believe that some men and women have been gifted the ability to speak the truth of God's word to others. And that's exactly what the scripture says. Now, as to the people today who say that they are an apostle or a prophet on equal footing with the Old Testament prophets, I do not believe that is scripturally accurate. Um, I believe the error is in whether they say they have the gift of prophecy or if they give themselves the office or title. And of course, I'm human. I make mistakes. I could be in error on this. Um, but it is my opinion based on my understanding of the scriptures. And you can just take that with a grain of salt. Um, one more thing I want to tell you real quick. What does the Bible say about a false prophet? What if somebody says they're a prophet and they say that something is going to happen and it does not happen? I believe that is a very serious offense. If you say God chose me as a special person to speak for him and he said that he's going to blow the town of Metropolis to smithereens off of the planet by November 15th of next year. And if that doesn't happen, guess what the Bible says about that person who is now a false prophet? Because what they said God said did not happen. And I believe that is also uh, one of the things that in the Ten Commandments where it says not to take God's name in vain, that actually means don't represent God falsely. And a false prophet is representing God falsely. So let me just read you um, a couple of verses about a false prophet. And this is about Hananiah. This is in the book of Jeremiah, 28th chapter. Hananiah was the son of a prophet. He made a prophecy that in two years, God will break the yoke of Babylon and restore Israel. And this is what Jeremiah, who was also a prophet at that time, but a real prophet, said to Hananiah. And this is in Jeremiah 28, 15, 16, and 17. Then Jeremiah the prophet said to Hananiah the prophet, Listen now, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, and you have made this people trust in a lie. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I am about to remove you from the face of the earth. This year you are going to die because you have counseled rebellion against the Lord. So Hananiah the prophet died in the same year in the seventh month. So that shows the severity of giving a word for the Lord when it's not from the Lord. So even if we're not um, one of those people who says, I am an apostle or I am a prophet, even if sometimes we think the Lord is telling us something, which we do this often, but I think we do it very casually. We say, I feel like the Lord is telling me to do this or to say this. 
And of course, I, I do that as well. I do say that. Um, but we need to be very, very careful what we say comes from the Lord. I have, I have had people tell me, the Lord told me, I'm going to have that house down the road. They, want, they wanted a new house. The Lord told me I'm going to move in that house. It's mine. I can have it. They didn't end up in that house. They were not speaking what the Lord told them because it wasn't God or it would have happened. So we need to be very careful when we say the Lord told me something. We need to take it very seriously. And we also need to be very careful when we assign ourselves a title or a divine commission. So I hope this was beneficial. We're, think, we're going to talk about maybe a couple more little prophets uh, between now and Monday. And then Monday we start in chapter one. So um, pray for me. I want to be able to um, help you understand the message of the book of Revelation. So I love you all. I will see you on the next video.